So, we continue with the discussion on modeling finite state machines. So, if you recall in our last lecture, we talked about finite state machines, the different types and how to model finite state machines in Verilog, we considered one example there. So, we continue with our, with our uh, discussion and we look at some more examples of modeling finite state machines. So, our lecture is modeling finite state machines, the second part. Okay. So, the example we take now, this is also a Moore machine, this is the design of a serial parity detector. Okay. Let us first try to understand what is parity. Suppose I have an n bit word, parity actually indicates whether the number of ones in that word is odd or even. Okay. If it is odd, we say it is odd parity, if it is even, we say it is even parity. Now, the parity can be represented by a single bit, let us say 1 can indicate odd, 0 can indicate even or the vice versa. Okay. So, here we are trying to design a circuit, where the input number that we are talking about this is not available in parallel, but coming serially bit by bit. So, as it is coming bit by bit, we are continuously computing the parity and we are continuously outputting a bit which indicates the parity of the stream that we have seen so far. So, what will be our logic here? We need to store only one piece of information whether the parity of the bits that we have seen so far is odd or even. Now, if my next bit coming is 0, then I will not change it, it will remain, but if my next bit is 1, then it will change. If it was odd, it will become even, if it was even, it will become odd. This is our logic. Okay? So, let us see, so how we specify our design. So, here he means as I said, a continuous stream of bits is fed to a circuit, let us say x is that bit stream in synchronism with a clock. The circuit will be generating a bit stream in the output which is here z and in the output stream a 0 will indicate even parity that means, so far we have seen even number of ones in x and output z will indicate that so far we have seen odd number of ones in x. Okay? Now, the output z, see here we need to maintain two states clearly, one indicating that whether the number of bits we have seen so far is even and the other number of bits so far is odd. Now, you see the output z can directly be generated from the state, so it really does not depend on the input. So, this is also this is an example of a mood machine. So, the state transition diagram we can show like this, this even can be your initial state, initially nothing has come, let us say it is initial. So, if a 0 comes, the output is 0 and you remain in the even state. Now, if a 1 comes, you go to the odd state and in the odd state, the output is odd to be 1. Now, while in the odd state, if a 0 comes, so it will remain odd, so the output will remain 1 but if a 1 comes, this odd will become even, so the output will again go back to 0. So, much state transition diagram is fairly simple with two states. So, here this is the first version of our design, where it is the same kind of a design, but there is an input x. You see in the earlier example, which we took, there were no inputs separately there was only three states red, green and yellow, they were cycling wherever a clock is coming, but now there is also an input x. Not only the clock, I will have to decide my next course, course of action depending on what is my next bit x, if it is 0 I will do something, if it is 1 I will do something else. Okay. So, so, in the first version again I have used a single always statement you see my x and clock are the inputs and z 
is an output because it is coming on the left hand side this reg and this machine requires a single state variable because there are two states odd and even I need one flip flop one bit. Okay. So, I define a single state variable even odd that can be either 0 or 1 and I am defining by parameter 0 means even e v e n and 1 means o d d odd. This is my procedural block. So, whenever the positive edge of the clock comes I check the state even odd. If it is even I do this, if it is odd I do this. So, what I do? I update both my output and also my state depending on the value of x. So, I use a conditional assignment statement here. What does this mean? If x is 1 then assign 1, if x is 0 assign 0 and here it means if x is 1 make the state odd, if x is 0 make the state even. So, this is exactly as per the state transition diagram. Okay. Similarly, if my state is odd then I do like this, if x is 1 I assign 0 to the output, if x is 0 I remain in the odd state assign 1 and here if it is 0 even, if it is 1 odd and by default because see initially if you do not initialize the state variable it can the outputs will be all indeterminate. So, here we have included a default statement. So, initially this even odd will start with even if nothing matches. Okay. So, here again because I am using a clock triggered always block and we are using non blocking assignment there will be one flip flop generated for z and one flip flop for the state even odd. This even odd is the state. So, this design will cause the synthesis tool to generate a latch for the output z, but again you try to understand the design just by knowing the state I can tell what the output is. I really do not need a latch to store the output. If it is even my output should be 0, if it is odd my output should be 1 simple. Okay, fine. So, this will be the corresponding test bench for this I am showing one example. So, we have instantiated this parity generator x clock and z these are the inputs you see x clock z same set of inputs and in this initial block I am doing two things I am specifying the dump file I am specifying the variables to dump all variables and initializing the clock to 0 because I have not given a delay this will be done at time t equal to 0 and again this is the clock generation with a delay of 5 I am complementing the clock. Now, here I am applying the bits. So, you see again now what has happened the clock will be coming like this. So, we have initialized clock at 0 at time 5 we are complementing this will be time 10, this will be 15, 20. So, after a gap of 5 we are complementing the clock right five, again at 30 it will go back to 0 and so on. So, now you see what I am doing to x, you see we are giving a delay of 2 such that when the clock h comes by that time this input should be stable. So, how we are applying x? We are applying x at a time equal to 2. So, we are applying 0. So, initially x can be anything I do not know it will be something invalid, but at time 2 I am making it 0. Okay. Now, again I am applying the consecutive bits with delays of 10 say 0, 1, 1, 1 and so on I am applying many bits, but initial bit I am applying at 2 then successive bits I am applying after delays of 10, 10, 10 like that. So, the first bit 0 will be applied at 2, the next bit 1 will be applied at a delay of 2 that means at 12. So, here if this time is 12, so at 12 it will be 1, next bit is 1. The next bit is again 1, so at time 22 if this time is 22, 
here I am applying again a 1. So, this 1 remains 1. Okay. Then again at time 32, I am because okay, so here also I am applying 1. So, this will remain 1. So, like this I am applying the consecutive inputs at times 2, 12, 22, 32 and so on. So, what I am trying to achieve? I am trying to achieve is that whenever the active edge of the clock comes the rising edge, well before that the input should be stable because if I change the input right when the clock edge is coming there will be a race condition. So, the output may not change properly okay. that is why we have given a small delay. Okay, this delay can be 2 or 3 or 4 no problem it should be before 5. So, like this we have done it before the clock edge comes the input should be changed and be stable. Okay. Fine. So, here you see the timing diagram of the simulation output. This is the clock signal which is coming and this is my x you see initially it was undefined at time 2 I am making it 0. You see what I have said here you look at here. So, initially it was undefined at time 2 it was made 0. So, for say up to time 12 it will remain 0 then it will go to 1. So, exactly the same thing happening you see at 2 at time 12 it is going to 1 at time 22 it remains 1 at time 32 it remains 1, but at time 42 it goes to 0 because next bit is 0 you see next bit I have applied 0 1 1 1 next bit is 0. Okay. So, like this the bits are coming and the outputs the, the outputs that will be generated it will be coming only after the clock okay. the first clock is coming here the first clock is coming here. So, the output is getting initialized here and the output will be generated accordingly. The, this one means odd then even odd odd even odd 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 even like that it goes on changing right. So, this is just an example. So, now we can improve this design to avoid the flip flop on the output. So, how we do just like the example we considered in the last lecture we split the always block into two. So, in the first always block we are only updating the state with respect to the clock edge. So, whenever there is a positive edge of the clock we check whether the state is even or odd if it is even depending on the input x if x is 1 we change the state to odd if x is 0 we leave it as even, but if the state is odd depending on x if x is 1 you make it even if x is 0 you make it odd and default is even. And in the other always block you trigger it whenever the state changes you do a case. So, if even is if the state is even the output is set to 0 if it is is odd the output will be set to 1 just that. Okay. So, here z can be directly generated from this state value in fact, you do not need any circuit at all the state directly will give z you can just connect a wire connecting even odd to z, z and even odd will be the same value. Okay. So, no latch is required here. Okay. Fine. Now, let us take the example of a milli machine. Now, in a milli machine you recall the output value will depend not only on the state of the machine, but also on the present input. Right? So, here let us see. So, the example that we are taking is that of a sequence detector. So, what is a sequence detector? Sequence detector is a circuit that again there is a serial bit stream x coming let us say as input and again it will be generating a serial bit stream as output let us call it z. So, our design specification says that whenever we encounter the bit stream 0 1 1 0 in the input stream this output z will immediately go to 1 and at all other times it will remain as 0. 
and overlapping occurrences will also be detected. For, for, for example, if I have 0 1 1 0, then again 1 1 0, then this will be considered as a 0 1 1 0 sequence and this will be considered as another overlapping 0 1 1 0 sequence. So, if this is your x, your output z will be here it will become 1 and here also again it will become 1 at all other times it will remain 0. Right? Okay. This is an example of a milli machine because the output also depends on the input. So, this is an example bigger example you see this is my x and here I get my first 0 1 1 0. So, this is my first one generated again overlapping 0 1 1 0 above one generated and again you have one here 0 1 1 0 again a one generated this will be your output stream right. Okay. Now, what will be my state transition diagram let us try to understand you see intuitively here I want to detect 0 1 1 0. So, you may say that well I start with some initial state 0 I go to one state 1 I go to another state 1 again 0 there should be 5 states, but when you start drawing the state transition diagram you can find out whether you really need 5 states or you can do with less. In this example you can specify the description using 4 states only. Okay. How? It is like this. So, I am assuming my circuit is as follows where there is one input x there is of course, a reset input reset I am showing separately clock and the output is z. The input bits they are applied in synchronism with the clock. Now, here whenever the reset signal is active I start in state s 0. Let us see here we are trying to detect the string 0 1 1 0 and whenever it is that output should be 1. Okay. So, let us identify the states s 0 means the initial state. So, whenever I get the first 0 I go to s 1 what does s 1 mean that I have seen the first 0 of the string. Then if I get a 1 I go to s 2 what does s 2 mean that I have got 0 followed by a 1 then I go to s 3 this s 3 means Okay, S3 whenever 1. So, 0, 1, 1. S3 means I have seen 0, 1, 1. Now, if I get another 0, what I could do? I could have brought it back to S0. You start with another string, but now because I am allowing overlapping of the strings 0, 1, 1, 0, I am moving it back to S1, not S0. Why S1? Because this last 0 can also be the first 0 in the string. So, as I had given that overlapping example earlier, okay. the last 0 of 0 1 1 0 that 0 can also indicate the beginning of the next 0 1 1 0. So, whenever a 0 comes which means I have encountered a 0 1 1 0 the output goes to 1 and my next state goes to S 1 because I am looking for the overlapping string if there is another 1 1 0. So, again a 1 will be generated. Right, but now let us look at the other edges. So, in S0, if I see that a 1 is coming, which means well, it is not starting with 0, I remain in S0, I wait for the first 1. Now, while in S1, I am expecting a 1 to come, but if it is 0, so I remain in state S1, that means a 0 is still there, maybe a 1 is coming. Now, in state S2, I have received 0, 1, I am expecting a 1 but if a 0 comes I go back to S 1 because I have seen a 0 Maybe I am again starting to look at the string. Similarly, at S 3 I have seen 0 1 1, but again a 1 comes. So, I have to start from the very beginning I have to again look for a 0 and like this. So, this will be my state transition diagram for this example right. So, this is my very log description. So, you see here we have already separated out two always blocks. 
So, in the one always block we have just only talked about the state changes, you see the description how we have done it, x clock and reset are the inputs, z is the output reg. And because there are four states I need two state variables reg 0 to 1. So, I call or I define two variables one as the present state and the next state and using parameter for convenience I call them the, the four states as S0, S1, S2 and S3. In the first always block which is triggered by the positive edge of the clock or the positive edge of the reset, what you do? If the reset is active I initialize the present state to S0 or if the reset is not active and a clock has come. So, whatever is my next state that will now become my present state. So, as the machine progresses clocks are coming. So, I have some inputs I have generated the next state when the next next clock comes that next state will become my present state again some input will be coming I generate the next state next time that next state will again become my present state and this will continue. Okay. So, here with the clock my next state is becoming my present state and in this always block we are actually generating the next state and z. You see you just recall for, for, for the that model of the sequential circuit we have given we, we talked about something called next state logic and we talked about another block called output logic. So, what does the next state logic contain? It will contain the primary inputs and my present state, it will generate the next state and the output logic it will also take as input the primary input and the present state it will generate the output let us say z. Okay. Now, both of these are combinational circuits. Now, this next state this is being fed to some flip flops. This flip flop is fed with a clock and the output of the flip flop I am calling as the present state. So, whatever is my present state this is being fed here as well as here right. So, this is how it works. So, the description of this flip flop I have kept in one always block where basically N s is going to P s and description of these two combinational blocks I have kept separate both of these will be combination. Okay. So, that I am doing in this second always block. So, I am just activating it or triggering it whenever P s or x changes. If the state is S 0, you see what happens in S 0. If the input is 0, I go to state S 1. If the input is 1, I remain in state S 0. Okay. So, if the like the next state, if the input is 1, I remain in state S 0. If the input is 0, I go to state S 1 and the output is 0 under both condition. So, here you can either write z equal to if x then 0 else 0 or you can simply write z equal to 0 because here z will be equal to 0 irrespective of x. So, this this also and this also you can simply write z equal to 0. So, so in S 1 if x is 1 I go to S 2 if x is 0 I remain in S 1 like that just exactly following the state transition diagram I code these if then else statements and my description is complete. So, similarly I can create a test bench. So, I instantiate my sequence detector x clock reset and z, x clock and reset are the inputs these are declared as reg, z will be where. So, again I am creating the dump files, I am initializing the clock to 1 and the reset clock to 0 and reset to 1. So, I am initial, initially resetting and at time 15 I am changing the reset to 0. So, from time 15 onwards my actual operation will start okay. and clock again with time 5 I am toggling. So, again I am giving a little delay 12 
because the first operation should start at time 15 right because till 15 reset is active after 15 actual operation will start. So, just before that at time 12 I am setting or I am sending the first bit then I am sending the consecutive bits after gaps of 10 10 10 because clock period is 10. So, 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 like this we are applying right. So, and again I will delay we finish. So, the simulation output comes like this. So, this is I am not showing the whole of it a part of it the clock is coming the reset you see the reset was activated initially to 1 and it remained till 15 it becomes 0. So, reset was 1 this is time 15 at time 15 it becomes 0 and after that it remains 0. So, my circuit starts operating from that point onward. So, and what about x I have set x equal to 0 at time t equal to 12. So, you see at time t equal to 12 I have before that it was undefined this red block red block means undefined it becomes 0 here then the successive inputs I am applying 0 0 1 1 I am applying like that 0 0 1 1 then 0 1 1 0. So, 0 1 1 0 like that. So, wherever I get a 0 1 you see the first 0 1 1 0 comes here 0 1 1 0 the first one comes here then there is an overlapping 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 ok. Then at the end there is again a 0 1 1 0. So, there will be 3 detections z will begin 1 here 0 0 1 1 first detection then overlapping 0 0 1 1 second time then again a 0 0 1 1 third time. So, there will be 3 outputs z equal to 1 ok. So, we have seen how we can actually model both Milli and Moore machines uh, means using Verilog. You can take other examples also similarly. So, the process of coding them in Verilog is exactly similar. So, you can take some other example like for example, talking about the talking about sequence detector again suppose I want to detect the sequence 101010. So, how will my state diagram look like? So, it will look something like this I am in state S0. So, I am trying to detect the sequence 101010. So, when the first one comes I go to state S1 this is my first one comes then a 0 comes I go to S2 then again a 1 comes I go to S3 then then again a 1 comes I go to S4 0 1 0 1 0 0 comes then the fifth one I go to S 5 ok. Then if a 0 comes where do I go now again if I look at overlapping patterns see 1 0 1 0 1 0 if there is again a 1 and a 0 I can consider this as overlapping pattern right. So, if a 1 comes after this, so I should actually send it to a state here where I am expecting a 0 again. So, if it is 1 I have to send it to S 1 not really S 1 I can actually send it to uh, I need a 1 and 0 after that I can send it to S 4 ok. Uh, if there is a 1 0 1 0 1 0 with an output of 1. So, if there is another 1 I go to S 5 it is another 0 I again go to here, but if my next bit is uh, let us say instead of 1 if it is 0 then not here I have to send it back to this S 0 again if it is 0. So, the other edges you can define like that ok. Let us also we talk about another example. Suppose we want to design a serial adder.
Well, you know about binary addition, suppose I want to add these two numbers, I do a bit by bit addition 0 plus 0 is 0 with a carry of 0, 0 1 1 is 0 with a carry of 1, 1 1 0 is 0 with a carry of 1, this is 1 with a final carry out of 0. We do it like this, normally here we have seen various kinds of adders like ripple carry adder or the carry look adder, both, are both, both, both these designs we have seen earlier. But now let us assume that we want to do this addition bit by bit serially, okay. how suppose we have an adder, this is my serial adder. So, my two inputs are let us say A and B. So, there is a single bit of A and single bit of B I am applying at one time and this is my sum and I am generating one bit of sum at a time. So, if these are my inputs let us say 0 and 0, first I will apply 0 here, I will apply 0 here, then I will apply 1, then I will apply 1. I will apply 1, then I apply 1, I apply 0, then I apply 0, I apply 0. So, this I will be doing in synchronism with a clock, there will be a clock signal. And you see internally if you now talk about this state, what do we have to remember? Here for every stage of addition, we only need to remember the previous carry. Okay? So, the only state we need to remember is a carry and that carry will be 1 bit. So, now you can construct your state transition diagram directly by considering the state of the carry. Let us say the carry was 0, the carry was 1. So, if you are resetting the circuit, it will start with carry of 0. So, initially there is no carry in right, so you start with 0 carry. Now, let us say, so if your input is 0 0 what will happen? If the input is 0 0 there will be no carry, so it will remain in the 0 state and the output will be 0, because if you add 0 and 0 output is 0, but carry is still 0. Now, if we apply 0 and 1, what will happen? So, if you apply 0 and 1, the sum will be 1, but no carry. So, carry will still be 0, so there will be another edge if it is 0, 1, but now sum will be 1. Similar will be the case if the inputs are 1 and 0, again sum will be 1, but no carry. So, 1 and 0, 1. But if it is 1 1 like this, then sum will be 0 and carry will be 1. So, now the carry state changes. If it is 1 1, the sum will be 0, but carry has become 1. But once carry has become 1, let us say my inputs are say 0 1 or 1 0 or 1 1, then there will be a carry. You see 0 1 means what? I have applied 0 and 1, but there is also a carry of 1. So, these 3 bits are added, sum will be 0 and again carry will be 1. So, it will remain in the 1 state, sum will be 0. Similar is for 1, same thing, but for 1 1, if there is also a carry 1, so I have a sum of 1 and also a carry of 1. So, the output will also be 1. Now, the only way to go back to 0 is when the input 0 0 is applied, 0 0 with a carry of 1, the sum will be 1, but next carry will be 0. So, this will be my state transition diagram for a serial adder. So, in this way you can actually create the state transition diagram of any FSM you can think of and once you have created the state transition diagram of the state table translating it to a very lock code in the way we have seen is absolutely straightforward. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. Thank you.